Hello, welcome. I wanted to just do a really quick video for you today. And I'm going to talk about something that you probably already know, unless you've been living under some kind of rock. But I think this is always important to refresh because it's super important. So, leaky gut and depression. There's a very, very strong link. There's a very strong correlation here. So, as I was saying, if you've, if you've been living under a rock, you, you've probably never heard of this. But I'm guessing most people watching probably, probably know this already. When your gut is leaky, stuff that's supposed to stay inside your digestive system doesn't stay inside your digestive system. It comes into your blood, it comes into your body. Everything that comes from, from your gut, before it reaches your body, has to go through your liver first. So if like anything bad leaks through, it's going straight to your liver. So that's just extra work for your liver to, to have to deal with. If it can't, if it can't deal with, with it, it can't filter it out, it's going into your circulatory blood system. So it's going, it's going everywhere in your body. It's going into your brain, it's going into your nervous system, it's going into all your organs. And this is stuff you don't really want going in there. This is stuff that's supposed to be inside your gut. So your gut has got this like this one one tiny cell thick lining. So it's like you've got like on this side you've got like your your digestive system, which I know this sounds funny, but your digestive system is like a hollow tube inside you that is not actually inside you. So if you connect like your mouth to your to your butthole, you've got like this tube that goes all the way through you, but this not. I mean, it's inside your body, but it's not inside your body. So everything that's inside from your mouth to your, to your butt is, while it's inside you, it's technically outside of you. It's not actually inside your body. And there's this one little cell lining thick that goes all the way along, on, like on all the way around your, your digestive system, that keeps things in your gut where they're supposed to be. And if you have leaky gut, these little, so these little cells, they're not like, they're not like, this close to each other anymore. There's like a tiny little hole. And it, through this tiny little hole, things can come through that are not supposed to come through. So this can be like, say for example, you eat some, some tuna because you're trying to get your omega-3s. And there's a, a small amount of mercury contamination. If your gut is completely sealed, you don't have any leaky gut, like most of that is just gonna stay in your digestive system. It's like 99.98% of that mercury will just stay in your gut. No problem. But if you do have increased permeability, your absorption rate goes up to, like, um, uh, at the top end, like 80%. So you can absorb a, a huge amount when your gut is, it has increased permeability. And this is, this is huge, like, this is really significant because even if you're eating very clean, so you're eating, like, completely toxin-free, even inside your own gut, you're producing toxins all of the time. Every time you eat something, you're producing toxins. Every time you eat, like even the cleanest food that's like completely organic on a, it's grown off of earth, you know, it, there's no contamination on it at all. You're still gonna produce toxins in your gut. And that's fine, you know, that's part of the digestive process. You're supposed to, that's how you're gonna extract those nutrients and absorb them into your body and do something with them. The thing is, these toxins are supposed to stay in your gut. One of these toxins, so this is the one that we're gonna be talking about today, is a molecule called lipopolysaccharide, LPS. You can go on Google and you can type lipopolysaccharide, you can type LPS, you can, you can search what I'm gonna tell you today on Google. There's like, I tried, to, I was gonna attach an article for this. There's so many, I wasn't sure which one to choose. There's like a hundred. So you can type LPS depression or LPS mental health. So what happens here, gut's leaking. You're producing lipopolysaccharides in your gut because you're a normal person, you're a human, you have, you have gram-negative bacteria in your gut, every single one of us does. And you're producing this molecule. And if it stays in your gut, it's fine. No problem. It's supposed to happen. It, it, it happens. It's fine. As long as it stays in your gut. If it leaks through your gut lining, it causes a huge inflammatory cascade. So the way that they, they, the, the way that they tested this is they took a lipopolysaccharide molecule and gave it as an injection. So there's studies about it being injected into mice. There's studies about it being injected into humans. The results, they're pretty much the same in, in both cases. When it goes into the mouse, the mouse basically, it basically just like lays down until it dies. Like it completely loses all motivation to do anything. It basically exhibits the animal, how an animal would exhibit the symptoms of depression. So it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't socially interact with, with any of the other mice that are in the cage. It doesn't eat, it doesn't groom itself. It doesn't, it just lays there and dies because it just doesn't care. It, it, it's depressed, and that's what the molecule does. It triggers an inflammatory cascade that causes depression in the mouse. 
They did the same thing with humans. So they took completely healthy humans. So they have no health problem, completely healthy. Like no history of health problems, no history of mental health problems, completely healthy people. They inject them with this, this chemical syringe of lipopolysaccharides. Every single person, without exception, exhibits symptoms of clinical depression. They're unmotivated. They lose their appetite or their appetite changes. They don't feel good. They, have, they develop like chronic pain in their body. This can trigger autoimmunity as well. So there's something happening there too. And they, they tested them with a mental health score. You know, they, they're like, how do you have feelings of suicide? How do you feel about this? Like, what do you think? And then every single person, without exception. So this isn't like, it was like statistically significant that slightly more than half of the people exhibited symptoms of depression. Every single person, without exception, exhibited symptoms of depression. So there's a, a very profound something that's happening here. And if you have a mental health problem and you haven't considered that your gut may be contributing to it in some way, I have to say, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you live in the 21st century. You really have to have been living under a rock to not know that your gut can be connected to your mental health. It, it connects to everything. It connects to your hormones. It connects to your immune system. It connects to your brain. It connects to everything. If, if you've gone to a professional and, and you've told them, like, I have depression, I have anxiety, I have some kind of mental health problem, I have schizophrenia, I have these symptoms, and they just try to put you on a medication and they don't do any investigation into your digestive system whatsoever, then like, go and find somebody else because you're not working with the right person. It, and I'm not saying other mental health problems don't, don't exist. I've experienced anxiety, depression, depersonalization, and other mental health things that were not physiologically generated. But what I am saying is, if it is, it, so it's not even just clinically significant, it's basically clinically guaranteed that if you have lipopolysaccharides in your bloodstream, you will experience symptoms of depression. So why is that not the first base? Why is that not the first place to start? Because I would, I would even say, like, treating that as a problem is so much easier than treating a true mental health problem. Because you have to figure out, okay, where's the lipopolysaccharide coming from? Well, obviously, you're not getting injected with it every day like these these um, test subjects were, it's coming from your gut. So we need to take a look into your gut and fix your gut lining. This can look like changing the microbiome balance. So we reduce the amount of these organisms that produce these molecules in your gut. We can work on reducing the permeability of the lining. We can heal the lining so these molecules don't, don't leak through. As I was saying, even if you're producing these molecules but they stay in the gut, there's no problem. They, they, don't, they don't cause depression because your gut is designed to be able to handle this. It's when they leak through that tiny little cell and come into the bloodstream and trigger an autoimmune cascade, an inflammatory cascade. They damage the brain, they damage all of the cells, they cause loads of different problems. That is when you have the problem. So it's not even the molecule that's the problem, it's the fact that the gut is permeable. The gut is leaky and it's leaking through. So if you need any help with that, let me know. I'm a gut health specialist. I love working on helping people fix their guts. I had a really awful gut. This is something I went through myself. So for me, my leaky gut symptoms were like, depression, anxiety, I had chronic fatigue that was a, 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 a majorly fueled by this. So there were some there were some other elements to this problem. But fixing my gut changed it so that I was like, instead of being stuck in bed and having such poor exercise, uh, I had such poor recovery from, from exercise, you know? I'd go for like a 10 minute walk, I'd get home and I'd be like bed bound, I couldn't even get out of bed. I'd have so much achiness and poor muscle recovery and I would eat something off my diet and it would trigger this like awful suicidal depression and I would be stuck in bed. It would trigger my autoimmunity. I would feel like I had like shards of glass in my in my wrists. Like imagine like washing up a cup, like doing this movement when you have arthritis in your wrist. It just, oh my God, it's horrible. You just, you just can't do it. So I had all of these different things and it was, and it was all because of my gut. And since working on my gut, reducing the permeability of this lining, rebalancing the microflora, supporting the digestive function, so working on like stomach acid. So these are the five pillars, in case you're interested. This is a, a course that I have. Just, just I'm, so I'm not, even, I'm not even trying to advertise the course today. I'm just trying to tell you the five pillars of the core primary functions of the digestive system. You've got stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, mucosa. Mucosa, the last one, this is the leaky gut. This is responsible for the digestion of starches. This is responsible for the digestion of lactose. This is responsible for the nutrient uptake of basically everything you eat. So if you have indigestion, if you have food intolerances, like you have to look into your gut. Like if, for those, it's more obvious. Like if you have food intolerances, like where should we look first? Hmm. Yeah, let's look in the gut. That's a good idea. But with mental health, maybe you didn't think about it. But I really think you should because it made a big difference for me. 
and it could make a really big difference for you. Uh, I'd really like you to not feel depressed and suicidal all the time. It would be really, really cool because life is better on the other side. So if I can help you, reach out, let me know. And if you have any questions about this, I'd love to answer your questions. So leave me your questions. Oh, we have a question. Cool. Good job. So if anyone has any questions, let me know. I'll, I'll answer them. So Marmar says, William, have you worked with anyone with autoimmune atrophic gastritis? With that specific diagnosis, no. I have worked with people that have autoimmune problems, yes. And I've worked with people that have gastritis. And I have, and still to some extent do have gastritis, although it is considerably better than it used to be. My gastritis used to be so bad, I basically couldn't eat anything. Now I can eat everything and I don't have any, any problems. I just have like a mild burning in my gut. So uh, have I worked with anyone that had that? No. I do suspect my gastritis was autoimmune in nature. I never got a diagnosis, unfortunately. I kind of dropped out of the mainstream medical system because they weren't really giving me the answers that I wanted. So very difficult for me to say if I have. I probably had it myself. I don't know for sure. But I have worked with people that have gastritis and I have worked with people that have autoimmune problems. So I do want to dash. So uh, leave me any questions that you have and I'll make sure that I answer them afterwards. I'll see you soon. Bye.